Okay, now that we can use a graphics window, let's look at something really cool, a zoom function. So once we create a zoom function, we can zoom in on our soon to be created Mendelbrot set. That's very cool. So now let's F5 to save and run this. And as you can see, we've got a graphics window. In this window, everything we want to see is on the left here. So if we can click and zoom on a point, as you can see here, isn't that pretty cool? So now I'll show you how to write this without function, so we're quick and dirty. So now we need three variables, so we can have a scale, so we can increase the scale, so let's initiate it to one. We need to get an x value, so we make get x, and let's initiate to zero, and we need to get a y, so let's make get y, and let's initiate this one to zero. Now inside of here, we'll simply be sneaky, and we're in an infinite loop, so let's just make while true. And inside of this, because we are using a mouse to pause the screen, it doesn't matter that it's an infinite loop. So get mouse equals win.getMouse. By using win.getMouse, we are able to put inside the variable we have called getMouse the position of the mouse when we click on the graphics window. So by using get mouse and getting the mouse position, we can now get its x and y coordinates. So that's called get x. And now we've got to update get x so that each time we click, we're going to add the offset to the value get x. So every time we click, we can get the x value using the get mouse dot get x. Now get x is an inbuilt graphics method. This will return the point of the click when we click. And we're simply going to take off the offset when we click. And we're going to do this every time that we click. So we can keep on moving along the X direction every time we click. We're going to do the same for the Y. So we're going to get Y. We're going to plus and equal. And in this case, because the Y value has been inverted, we have to invert the values we're going to add. So we're simply going to do minus 250 plus get mouse dot get y so now every time we click we can get the y value as well and we can update the get y so every time we click we're going to update the get x and get y with the click position adding the offset being from the center of the screen we have used 250 here because it is half the screen distance so since the x is 500 long if we offset it by 250 we can know whether we want to move to the left or to the right, or in this case with the Y, up or down. So every time we do this, we also want to update the scale. So let's make scale equal to itself multiplied by 2. So we can scale in by 2 every time. And then we can simply close the old window. Down here we can now create a new graphics window by simply being lazy and copying and pasting. We have called the graphics window awesome with 500 by 500. Now we can simply input our new values using the offputs we have created and the scale. So now copying and pasting this previous equation in here, we can simply update it with our new offsets. So holding that all, indent it once using tab, so it's indented now inside the while loop. And now we need to offset it using these new values. Now this 500 here is simply to invert the window so we can leave that outside of the new equation. So we want to play around with everything inside of the braces here. So we're going to get the Y value that we get from the get Y every time. And we're going to add that to the total output that we're getting from the equation. By adding the get Y to the output, we can move it up or down depending on what we get from our click. Inside of here, we also need to manipulate the x value so that every time we have an input for x, it is manipulated before we run the equation. So now let's get x and take x before we do the power of 2. There's also one more thing we need to include, the scale. And we can include the scale here to the input of the x every time. So now we make sure that this is inside of the brackets so that we get x, take x before we do any of the equation. We should, when we print this off, be able to zoom function. Now let's hope this works. There we go. 
is our little zoom function. So now we run our window, F5 to save and run, click where you'd like and it'll zoom in on your clip. Now with this zoom, we'll be able to apply this to our Mendelbrot set and reprint the window so we can zoom in infinitely and get an infinite Mendelbrot set.